Let's move on to the next question. So can you provide examples of how AI has already been implemented in talent acquisition processes and the resulting benefit or challenges? Uh, so Annie, we'll kick off with you. I think we're quite lucky at Clio. We get um, premium open AI access as a benefit, which is great. So all of the team are using ChatGPT, which is fun. So we, what I've seen us using it, mo where I've seen it, I was using it the most probably earlier on in the process when you're starting to kick off a role, helping to build out interview processes, scoring rubrics and stuff like that, building out job descriptions. Um, that's been really helpful. Those kind of heavy admin writing tasks, ChatGPT has really, really helped us as there. Um, I'd love to find a tool that helps with scheduling with AI, but I haven't found the quite the right one yet. Unfortunately, if anyone knows any great tools for scheduling with AI, please let me know. Um, and then also just with writing summaries. So we're working with MetaView, does a really great job of um, kind of creating summary notes from interviews. It's been a bit of a game changer because that takes so long for TA partners writing up your notes after a call, even just sitting there typing, it kind of really takes away from the conversation. So yeah, I would call out MetaView as a, a tool that's been really effective. Nice. Uh, Matthias, anything to add? These are exactly my notes, but now maybe um, to add on this as well as um, what I think is also very interesting if you have for market research, yeah, um, if, if you have never hired a role before, yeah, um, and try to understand what does that role look like, what skills does this role have, where can I find this, who, what are the companies, you know, who are, or where this talent is located, this is also really helpful what I found. Also, I don't know any if if you do this as well because um, assessment rubrics. Um, I, I totally with you on this. What I then also prompt ChatGPT on is then to say, look, um, can you also give me the answers to the questions mm -hmm. and rate them based on a bad answer, a good answer, and a great answer, so that you also have a little bit the narrative of people who might ask questions in certain areas where they don't feel comfortable scoring against it to say I have give, given you a little bit of a wiggle room of like if somebody answers like that then hey this is where where this should be because sometimes we tend to forget this and stop just with interview questions where I'm like yeah that's okay but it actually needs to go a little bit further um, because that um, that gives uh, more clarity uh, on this so this is also what I have seen also a user of MetaView. So I'm a huge fan of this. So yeah, a second shout out there. Um, I just, uh, last week I met with a founder um, a style um, for lunch. Um, great person, um, great people to to bounce ideas off. And um, anything else? I think what I've seen also with, um, there will be a lot of vendors now coming up with um, AI features, right? And so the question is how this evolves. So for example, we have a vendor called High People um, where you can literally add your job description in and they will tell you what kind of assessment you actually can choose based on their assessment library. So that's maybe something as well that I think uh, might be useful, but um, you will see more. Yeah, you will see definitely more, um, but I would highly, highly recommend everyone in this space to start trying out um, ChatGPT. Um, or AI in any sense, because I also have seen or have heard that people tend to be like, mm, I'm not sure, and I wouldn't touch it, and ah, it's, you know, the legal topic and compliance topic, etc. is a big one, or there's a lot of unclarity there, so uh, make sure you get familiar with this tool, because not AI will replace your job, but the people with AI will, so yeah, you better get a, get a better sense there. Yeah, that, that's the point, isn't it? Is uh, AI won't take our jobs, but people who know how to use these tools really, really well will. So that's a, an excellent point. Um, I mean, you've both spoken about using these, these incredible tools that are making our lives better and easier and doing the things that none of us like to do. But how do you foster this culture of, you know, integration and adoption for the team? Annie, we'll start with you. I think with some of the tools that we've been using, you get like a free trial, which is always handy. Mm -hmm. And with MetaView, we definitely kind of made use of that. So you can kind of test it. I think um, giving the team freedom to try new things and, and fail and experiment, I think, um, yeah, fostering a culture of experimentation is great. I think, mm. 
yeah, I'd always tell the team I'd much rather you try something new and it didn't work out and you learned something rather than not trying anything new at all. Um, sticking with the same approach is not going to work. So yeah, kind of fostering that kind of culture within your team and allowing people to make mistakes is, is key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Matthias? Yeah, I would second that. I think uh, it all starts with uh, a trusted environment uh, and that actually starts without AI first with a speak up culture yeah, and that uh, ability to fail as well, to learn from it, so it's, it's okay. But then um, I also think, um, you know, kind of giving people the sense to, if you use those tools, to also get the right mindset next to it. So I think if you per default just believe that, look, whatever AI puts, gives me as an outcome, uh, this is all great and perfect, um, then you might be off the wrong track, right? So uh, because it's new generated content and you need to have a, a you know, apply a critical um, uh, thinking uh, mindset behind it. So you don't need to create content so much anymore, but you need to review it, right? Mm -hmm. And challenge it and make sure it connects the dots because in the end of the day, always in human conversations, you will get more of a sense of what is actually important or, hey, what can we redefine? So we will probably do more reviewing tasks in the future uh, than we've used to do this right now. And then I think also, um, also I think with AI, it's not so much of the outcome, but the process. Like, do you understand what you want out of it? Do you understand how you can guide and prompt engineer, so to speak, um, ChatGPT? I, I think it's, um, look, if we, if we compare it with interviews, right? You can have a lot of interviews, but that doesn't mean you recruit the best person. But if you ask the right questions, you probably get there sooner. Yeah, and this is a little bit how I, I explain it. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And you touched on a uh, compliance a, a moment ago, Matthias. I think, yeah, this mm -hmm. is a compliance and I guess the, the ethical implications of it all is something that's uh, top of a, a lot of recruiters minds. Do you have kind of any advice or I guess any predictions of how that's going to look in the future? Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> not, a, not, a, not an easy one. Um, so look, I think what I'm still not doing, and I think I would not advise people to do this, is put company data into ChatGPT. Um, what I think I use ChatGPT for is productivity, so boosting of individual uh, productivity. But I would not put my ATS data into this and then say, hey, where are the flaws and how can I improve my hiring patterns and so on. That's mm -hmm. maybe something I would be mindful of. I think where this is always going is like one of my tips, my pros tips, I would say is um, there is this European act of AI out there, right? And it's really cool. They have a web page and you can sign up for a newsletter. So you get up to date every week, kind of the updates, what is Spain thinking, what's Italy thinking, whatever, to get a little bit of a sense of where this notion is. It's still a draft, right? So they will also create a final version, but being part of the actual conversation and the thought process will be good. I'm a little bit afraid, honestly, that um, the EU or the European Union will react to a um, more reactive uh, and more reactive approach in banning things or regulating things too much. Um, but um, I can also clearly see that um, there is some opportunity there where people push back a little bit because of the global um, competition that we have with China and the US. Um, but then again, what we see currently in the market is TikTok is banned or is going to be banned from uh, from the U.S. market. So there are a lot of conversations and political actions that will happen with technology that we see. Um, but nonetheless, however this ends, I think you still should work with those tools. And then at one at one space, so what I saw from my company, actually, they got similar to any and they, somebody approached me because I talked to them about ChatGPT, and then they said, Matthias, we got a company account now. Do you want to have access? And it's like, oh, this is fantastic, right? So at one point, we are already getting in that right direction, but starting with conversations, really, you know, um, um, understanding what the um, institutions and the US and as well Europe does is really, really important. And um, it is also, again, when you go back to the sea level, picturing this, mirror this with the sea level, see this is where we are. 
is this is part of influencing. It doesn't have to have an outcome. It, it actually just um, um, starts a conversation where people make up their mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's my two cents there. Yeah. Thanks, Matthias. And Annie, what about you? What is uh, what's Clio doing to stay compliant, you know, with the integration of all these AI tools? Yeah, so I guess as a, a AI chatbot, we we've kind of fully implemented ChatGPT within the product itself. Mm -hmm. So when you speak to um, Clio, she comes back to you, but we use um, ChatGPT to kind of scale the product a lot quicker and to make the chat experience a lot more int intelligent. So that's been quite an interesting um, move for us. And um, I think that's probably why we have it as a benefit. So our CEO is very keen for everyone to familiarize themselves with the advancements happening in AI um, because it's so relevant to the product that we're building. Um, but yeah, I think um, as Matia said, like just avoiding putting any customer data in there, any company data or any candidate data, just keep it all very high, high level. Mm, yeah, makes sense. Thanks, Annie.